Hi, I'm Mark Bellis. Welcome to my first LEGO Pneumatics tutorial. For many years now, adult LEGO fans have been using pneumatics to make two-state and sometimes three-state automatic machines and robots of all kinds, some of them walking, some static. What I'm going to tell you about today is something quite revolutionary in LEGO pneumatics. I'm here to demonstrate that LEGO pneumatics doesn't have to be a two or three state system, but in fact the cylinder can be controlled to any desired position within its travel. This is the demonstration model. Uh, I built it as a celebration that the LEGO group have decided to bring out a new set next year with the return of LEGO pneumatics. The set number is 8049, so uh, write that down and buy yours next year. This system uses the air pump or in this case I've connected up a compressor, uses two pneumatic valves and one output cylinder. There's also a power functions battery box and a medium motor. This system combines signals from the red input beam, the motor and the blue feedback beam to produce any desired position of the cylinder. The reason I've used two valves offset is to get rid of the dead band in the middle. Normally the valve starts about here, stops in the middle and goes the other way about here. What I'm using is this portion just between stop and going to one side and I have one valve going to each side there. That means that a small movement of these parts at the top will change the air pressures in these two pipes. So the input comes in with the red beam there, the motor signal is added on, now the motor signal is a dither and this pulley, turn it around, you can see it moves these cranks, so it just applies a small amount of regular movement to the two levers and what it does is alternate a small amount of pressure difference in the two pipes just to keep the cylinder moving, get rid of the stiction. And then the feedback beam takes up a portion of the position of the output lever in turquoise there and feeds that back because the valve faces are mounted on the blue beam. I can't really push those much. Oh, there we go. So you can see they're all connected. So what happens is you take the red input, add the dither, subtract the feedback and that becomes the air pressures per centre of the cylinder. Now this applies some standard industry practice that is in many industries, uh, not least in the control of um, engines and hydraulics by a hydromechanical unit. So normally fluids are used which are oil based and therefore um, hard to compress. This of course is using pneumatics and air is very easy to compress by comparison. So this is why it's quite a revolution in LEGO pneumatics to uh, make this closed loop system. So um, I'm going to turn on the uh, air compressor which is actually very noisy so I, I hope you'll still be able to hear my voice over it. Let's bend down here, here we go, I'll show you that. There's a, a Carter air compressor there, it'll do 250 psi but I set it to 20 psi which is a safe uh, level for LEGO pneumatics and I've got a, a, a car 12 volt power supply there. So I'll turn that on and see how noisy it is. Okay, I'll come back up here and hopefully the, uh, we're slightly more shielded from the noise on over here. Now I'm going to turn on the dither from the power functions battery box and you'll see the red beam will move. Okay, so now the, the dither is applied but the red beam is taking all the movement there because it has less resistance to movement than the movement to the valve levers. So what I'll do now is, I'll move that one out of the way, and I will grab hold of the red beam, there we go, and you'll see the cylinder has assumed a position in the middle. Now if I move the red beam slightly, you can see that 
I go to creep it to the left there, the cylinder is creeping towards close, and that's now fully closed, and the travel in the red beam is approximately two studs. Um, the same with the blue beam. If I now increase the red beam, move it to the right, you'll see that the cylinder gradually creeps to the right with it. And there we go, that's full travel now. And I can come back to any point in the middle and increase and move about at will. There you go. Um, so you can see that as I move the red beam, the blue beam will follow. Now what's happened is I have applied a gain of 40% to the blue beam from the output. That means that of this distance here, 40% of it there is what I feed back to the blue beam. I'll just turn the system off so that you can hear me better again. There we go. A bit quieter now. Okay. Um, no doubt uh, quite a few of you would like to try this system. Um, so what I've... I'll just go a bit more into the construction of it. I've got a couple of 16 beams there on the back. Um, giving me some vertical rigidity. Uh, these two in particular uh, keep them straight. Uh, I've used um, some upside down plates there, two, two of those, and then these slide well within it. It just means that it doesn't waggle too much up and down. The same there with the uh, feedback beam. And this, this beam across the front here, and those attached to the red beam, just keep the, uh, the beam sliding in nicely and, and don't make it come backwards or forwards. Um, so what we can do with this system, we can take the output from here, maybe as a, a suspension or something, if I turn it up this way, like that, and I press it down maybe on the battery box, you can see that, that sort of suspension idea, and um, even there's, there's enough air just to, to move it back there, even with the system switched off. Um, I could also take these two air pressures to another set of cylinders, maybe um, two in series or several in parallel so there's something heavy. Um, so there are actually two outputs but what actually happens with this system is that um, the valve positions uh, are turned into air pressures. Now the air pressures, the differential pressure across the piston inside this cylinder is applying a force per unit area to um, the piston and that's because of the uh, F equals MA, that turns into the acceleration of the piston. So we can only affect the acceleration of the piston, we can't actually affect its position. But the position is what we want to control. So this feedback system allows us to control the position. So the um, advanced techniques that I've applied here are firstly the offset parallel valves to get rid of the dead band. Um, secondly, applying a dither, which keeps the, uh, the system on its toes, so to speak, um, stops it uh, sticking too much, and then the feedback as well. Um, so, most of these are new to LEGO pneumatics, and uh, certainly their combination is as far as I know. So, uh, I hope you enjoy this and uh, enjoy experimenting with it. It's certainly possible to uh, take an output from this output lever here. Uh, process something in a model and feed it back into the input there. Uh, this is the sort of thing that real industrial systems do all the time. Um, so if I was uh, driving a maybe a fuel valve with this lever, the fuel would be fed to maybe an engine and I would maybe take the speed of the engine, um, apply some kind of control law and feed it back into this input. Um, so that this this system as it is here would represent the minor loop in a control system and the connection from the output through the engine back to the input would be the major loop. So uh, yes, the gain of different parts of the system is important to um, keep it stable. So this is why the feedback is 40% there, the length of these levers compared to the amount of dither is also important. Um, yes, no doubt we'll have uh, plenty of time to discuss these things on the various bulletin boards. So, uh, 
Anyway, this is Mark Bellis for the Embellished Brick Mocks channel. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, talk to you later online. Bye for now.